to run an analysis using Autodesk Inventor Nestran, uh, you have been given a component. So your task is to redesign this component. This is the base of that component. So you can get the dimensions of the component from here. You are required to research about the boundary conditions for this component. I'm going to apply some random boundary conditions right now, but you have to research and prove that you have got the reliable data. Now, in this case, this is given to us. Firstly, you have to analyze this component and see how this is going to behave under different types of loading. Then you are going to redesign this component, maybe change its uh, shape, optimize its shape and so on to see how this component is going to behave and under different types of design. Okay, you can optimize the design of this component, change it, reduce the mass, and then rerun the analysis. So if you want to run the analysis using Autodesk Nestran, so in this case, you have to run the analysis in Autodesk Nestran. Click on environments. Uh, before you run the analysis on Autodesk Nestran, the first thing you should do is to specify the material, as this could be uh, a generic material. So double check whether your material has been assigned click on the bearing bracket assembly and you will be able to see the material has been assigned or not. So if mild steel appear here, then it has been assigned. Otherwise, you can just scroll up and down and find your chosen material. It could be any material. Again, I'm just applying a random material for the time being, but you are required to research about this type of bracket and find out what type of material they use in this type of bracket. For the time being, just to give you an example, I'm using mild steel. This uh, you should verify and justify why you are using my steel if you are using my steel later on yourself. Now, uh, once you have specified the material, the next thing is to ch check the document settings. As I am giving you this file, it could be the document settings could be different. Even if you are in millimeters, maybe this could be a different unit. So you can just click on document settings and then click on units and ensure length is in millimeters. If it is in inches, change it to millimeters. Mass kilogram, time in seconds and angle in degrees. If every unit is like this, press OK. Now click on environments and click on Autodesk Nestran. To run the analysis in Autodesk Nestran, the first thing you should do, there should be, as I have opened the Autodesk Nestran in front of you, the previous analysis I have ran so far has appeared here. So the first thing I should do is to delete these analyses. If, I, if you don't need them, you can just delete them. Otherwise, you will not be able to run the analysis properly. So delete the analysis first. The second thing you need to do is to delete the idealizations as well. Ensure there isn't any idealization under solid shell and beams. Ensure there's just one material specified here. If it says generic material specified here, you can double click the material and then you can select the material from Autodesk material library and then you can select the material of your choice from here. If you select the material of your choice, let's say I'm choosing stainless uh, or let's say mild steel for the time being, St click on mild steel, press OK and it will specify the material here. If you want to alter any properties, you can just alter the properties by entering the values here. Press OK. And this material will be specified. If it says generic here, then you have to change it. Otherwise, leave everything as it is and delete the idealizations which were there before. Delete the constraints. As you can see, this is there from my previous analysis as well. So I can just delete them. Loads, delete them as well. Once you have deleted all the constraints, the next step, ensure everything is clean and as it is, okay? Material is specified, there is no idealization, there is no constraint and there is no loads. Once everything seems fine, specify the idealization, okay? Press OK and this will specify the idealization for solid one. Click on constraints and specify the constraints. Now these constraints could be different for you. When you're going to research and find the constraints, then you can apply the constraint. For the time being, just to give you an example, I'm specifying random constraints. I'm fixing this bottom face. But in your case, it will not be like this because there will be bolt going through this and you will be fixing a different face or different parameter in, in your case. 
research what is fixed in the bearing bracket like that and then apply the boundary conditions this is just an example that's okay and i have fixed the bottom face but it will not be in the real world scenario you have to find out which face needs to be fixed click on loading now you need to apply the loading in in the case of loading as the bearing i'm going to apply bearing loading so just from the type of load just select bearing load and select normal to surface and specify the load have a look at your origin as you can see my y-axis is if i put any value in negative y-axis it will be pointing downwards okay if you want to put it an angle you have to find out horizontal and vertical components but for the time being i'm just putting a straight down value if you want to put it an angle you will have to find out the horizontal and vertical components of the vector fx and fy or fg vector so for the time being let's say this is minus 250 newtons of force i'm applying on this structure press ok and the force will be applied so this is the bearing load bearing load represents loading of this type parabolic loading which is maximum in the middle and as you go on the sides it is lower now click on mesh settings you have you want to specify the mesh settings which has been assigned to you you can refine the mesh further you want to specify this type of mesh for example this is given to you as 0 0.0023 meters okay so that would be around zero point zero zero two three one four nine three yeah this, this is given to you in meters so this would be around 2.3 in millimeters so specify element size 2.3 if you want to refine it further you can um, uh, if you fully go it it's 0 0.5 so you can just specify or given give the parameters which i have given you if you want to refine this further you want to go more uh, for a smaller element you can just refine it further okay keep it parabolic and uh, click on settings and tolerance is given to you as 0 0.00116 six or uh, this is five seven so i'm approximating this to six obviously you're going to use your own values which are given to you zero point triple zero one one five six zero point triple zero one one six so zero point triple zero one one six which is approximately same okay so I'll just press ok continue smashing and press ok to generate the mesh Once the mesh is generated, the next step is to run the analysis. Or before you run the analysis, specify the contacts. As you can see, we have not specified the contact so far. So we can specify the automatic contacts between the bearing and the solid surface there. So that will specify the surface contact. Okay, once you have done that, you can double check your number of nodes and elements if they are higher than what was specified to you total nodes should be higher than 75,000 total elements should be higher than 48,000 so these are higher than that so just press ok and run the analysis once your analysis is complete you will be able to see the results now in these results I have got deformed option turn on and this is an exaggerated deformed structure so i can just click on deform options turn it on ensure that is ticked and from this deform options you can just change it to actual because right now this is 10 percent deformation so this is your actual deformation press ok and now you are able to view the results. In this case, we have got maximum and minimum von Mises stress. We will be able to find the areas of con uh, concentrated stress where the stress is higher. Okay, you may want to refine the, your design and you may want to increase decrease the mass of this base object. So this is your first analysis. Uh, this is where you are analyzing how this component is behaving. Once you have optimized the design, you are going to run the analysis in the same way. You can get your uh, contour options. You can just change the result data. If you are looking for displacement, you can have a look at the displacement. 
so that's the maximum displacement 0 0.0136 and the minimum is 0 and if you want to have a look at the safety factor of this component to ensure whether your component is safe to use click on other and then from the type change it to safety factor as you can see the minimum safety factor we have got is higher than one which is 6.3 it means the component is safe to use safety factors which are higher than one it means if your minimum safety factor is higher than one it means your component is safe to use but ensure you are using uh, taking into account the ultimate tensile strength of the material or ultimate compressive strength of the material while you are calculating the safety factor so software automatically calculates it for you so it's giving you a ratio of uh, ultimate tensile strength over working stress safety factor and you're getting at get, getting it as 6.33 which is higher than one it means your component is safe to use if it is lower than one it means you need to optimize your design okay so that's how you can view the results And if you want to alter any parameters, you can, for example, you want to alter the loading you are applying. If you want to increase the loading, if you want to apply constraints somewhere else, double click on the under the model tree and you will be able to do this.